Happy New Year. Let me speak to Betty. Uh, the party's over. She probably went home. She lives there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know her. Well, then get on the phone. Tell her it's an emergency. Who, who should I say is calling? You tell her it's Teddy from work. On the phone, and there's a major fucking emergency. Hi, Ted. I'm Margaret. You sound down. Has this not been the happiest of New Year's? No, Margaret. This hasn't been my happiest New Year. This one's starting off pretty fucking badly. Oh, how kind. Well, Betty leaves me here all by myself. And first thing, right off the bat, I'm fucked by a coven of witches. You were fucked by an oven full of witches? A coven of witches! Not an oven! Well, one witch in particular. Was she an old hag with a mole on her face with hair growing out of it? No, no, she was very beautiful. Ted! What's the problem? Well, admittedly, that was the best part of the evening. It was pretty bloody good, actually. But it's still a pretty unnerving way to start off the night. Sounds like a pretty great way to start off the night to me. Why don't we just skip over the witches? Skipping the witches. Later, in another room, some crazy fucking maniac sticks a gun in my face and forces me to play out some psychosexual drama with his wife. He made you have psychosex with his wife? No, he didn't make me fuck his wife. He thought I'd fuck his wife. He held me at gunpoint with a loaded gun. What kind of gun was it? I don't know. I'm not a gun guy. It was, it was big. Was it like Dirty Harry's gun? Yeah, sort of like that, yeah. Did it have a real long barrel or a short barrel? What difference does it make? Well, for one thing, it's a difference between a 44 Magnum and a Magnum 357. Who the fuck cares whether it was a 44 or a 392? It was a big fucking gun. It was loaded and it was pointed right at my fucking head. You want to skip this part, too? I want you to get Betty on the phone right fucking now. Hold on. Anybody live your name? What's her name again? Betty. Betty. What's you screaming about? You're Betty? Yeah, I'm Betty. It's my fucking place. Who the fuck are you? I'm Margaret, and this is Ted. You guys want to go to breakfast? Mm. Let's go to dinner later. OK, Ted, what's the problem? Hello, Betty. What's the problem? I haven't got a problem. I've got fucking problems. Plural. Want to hear? Sure. Well, most recently, there's room 309. There's this scary Mexican gangster dude poking his finger in my chest. There's his hooligan kids snapping their fingers at me. There's a putrid, rotting corpse of a dead horse stuffed in the springs of the bed. There's rooms blazing a fire. There's a big, fat needle from God knows where stuck in my leg, infecting me with God knows what. And finally, there's me, walking out the door, right fucking now. Buenas noches. Is that the penthouse? Yes, it is. It's the Chester Rush party. They want something. Well, Tom, Titty, they're just going to have to whistle because I'm off. Now, Ted, wait a minute. I know you're freaked. I know you're stressed. You had a real bad night. Oh, yes, Betty. I've had a real bad night. The only thing I ask is that you take care of Chester Rush, and then you can leave. I don't feel like it. Ted, he's a very important guest of the hotel. In fact, he's the most important guest of the hotel. The Monsignor used to be a haven for movie stars. Through the 30s, 40s, and first half of the 50s, more movie stars, if you break it down on a night-by-night -night basis, stayed at the Monsignor than any other hotel in Hollywood. Now, we're having a hard time in the 80s, even though we were the official hotel of Candy Pictures. But we're coming back strong in the 90s, and a movie star clientele is important to that comeback. Don't you look at here! He probably just wants some champagne. You can do that, can't you? Ted, just take care of him. The entire staff of the Monsignor is begging you. OK. But you get your ass down here, pronto. You're a good man, Ted. Hello, Mr. Rush. Sorry, I'm late. How can I help you? 